Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about mulching. Now we'll talk about the different types of mulch there is, why we do it, and then I'll show you my favorite way to mulch around the garden, and that is the living mulch. So I'll show you guys the different types of plants that I use for mulching. Now, the reason we do this is because we want to retain the soil moisture to be longer lasting so that you don't have to keep watering as much, especially for Southern California or in a more arid climate. You know, we uh, have a more, it's really dry here. So, and we don't get a lot of rain at all. So we really have to rely heavily on personally like watering, which includes either hand watering or like your drip irrigation setup that you have. So when it comes to mulching, as you can see, when you put an layer on top of the soil, it acts as insulation. So mulching could be anything from dried leaves that you, you know, did some pruning around the garden and you just lay it right over the, the soil. You can use any kind of like dried material. Some people even use like rocks or, or, or gravel because you know if you have like a drought tolerant cacti kind of a garden you can use rocks to place on top there's also cacao shells that they basically kind of crush up and you can throw on top there's also like wood bark there's different types of materials basically they act as insulation when you place it on top of the soil so it really helps to retain moisture keeps the ground a little cooler in the summer and then in the winter it would actually keep the ground warmer. A garden just looks more uniform when you have mulch you know all around it just especially depending on the type that you use if it's like wood chips bark you know it, it gives it a very natural look but also really nice or dried leaves. Dried leaves gives it a super natural really cozy kind of a feeling but my favorite way to mulch around here is living mulch. Now, living mulch literally just means growing plants to cover the soil. So they are your ground covers or the shorter border plants. When you grow plants closer together, they kind of, you know, act as a canopy to shelter the soil. And another benefit to mulching is that you can protect you know, the microbes in the soil, especially when the UV rays and the sun hitting directly into the soil, it dries it out too quickly. Also, it can reduce the population of the microbes that are all happening. You know, those free workers you get that are so precious and valuable underneath the soil. Growing in a small garden, I think it's especially important to have living mulch because it basically, to me, it feels like you're doubling your growing space. When you put living mulch under, you are just taking up every inch you can possibly grow in. There are ground covers that, you know, do well in full sun, part shade or full shade. So I'll show you all the different types that I love growing here and also they are edible. So I think it's a win-win-win situation. <laughs> Let me show you the first one that I'm talking about. The first one I want to show you guys are the sweet potato vines. Now I've been growing these in part shade here for the uh, sweet potato slips. Sweet potatoes are really great ground covers. Remember those ivies you see in all over different types of public landscaping and they are beautiful. However, they're not edible, not that I know of. So sweet potatoes have you know those these leaves that remind me of those ivy but then they also flower especially if you grow them in the sun the ones that i grow here you know it's the purple sweet potatoes and they have these beautiful uh morning glory type of flower shape uh, like trumpet you know shaped flowers that are lavender so if you grow them in the sun you not only get tubers that are edible sweet potatoes right and you get beautiful flowers. The leaves are also edible. So if they grow, you know, and they get out of hand, you can always cut the leaves to, to eat. I have a video showing you guys one of my favorite super easy ways to eat sweet potato leaves. So I will link it down below for you guys to go check out. But yeah, sweet potatoes are so multi-purpose for plants to grow. They're really great ground covers. They like relatively moist soil and you can really grow them out with different types of plants. Like I have one 
in more sun area that I've growing sweet potatoes, but I also got a cherry tomato in that same pot. And so you can have, you know, this acting, the sweet potatoes acting as ground cover for my cherry tomatoes or any kind of plants that you're growing. And then in the shade, if you like sweet potatoes and you want to just grow them for the leaves, you definitely can do that. And you can grow them really anywhere because they're just super hardy. It's just that if they're not in, in full sun, you're not going to really get tubers to eat. Under these ashitaba plants, these are some sweet potatoes. I literally just threw down sweet potato tubers in the soil and kind of lightly cover them with soil to really encourage the, them to sprout really. So that's how I ended up with like just a bunch of slips here that I'm actually going to dig up. So stay tuned for that video if you guys are interested in seeing how I like to make slips. It's super easy. I don't have to keep tending to it and changing out the water. This is how I grow slips. So I'll make another video and I'll link it down below once that video is out so you guys can grow your own sweet potatoes and make some living mulch. So the next one here we got are the go-to cola, also known as Rao Ma in Vietnamese. The variety that I'm growing is the one I grew up eating in Vietnam. So this one is more fragrant compared to the ones from the Americas. The one from America has, I think they grow faster. They also are more uh, tolerant of the cold. However, it does not have as much of a fragrance like these ones do. That one has a little more stronger astringent to me. So I really, this is really one of my favorite herbs. It's really good for your brain. I have a couple of episodes in the past sharing like what I like to do with it, how I like to extract the juice of this to, to drink. And it's just really good for, you know, your brain health. So these ones actually can grow in you know, a little more sun, but it can actually can take full shade or part shade as well. This one out here is getting a lot of shade in a light sun, I would say. And they are kind of a little further away from the Ashitaba plants. Goto Colas really love moisture. So if you got a really wet spot in the garden, that's perfect for them to spread. They just kind of stay like, you know, under a feet and they just kind of keep spreading so this is a really great use of space especially that damp area in the garden go to cola is the one i highly recommend mm. it has a tiny bit of a bitterness to it but it's a really pleasant kind of a bitterness to me if you pick the smaller leaves they are younger so they tend to be a little more tender. Mm. Do I feel smarter now? <laughs> now moving on to the spot that gets a little more sun. Right over here, I got some gold moss living mulch. I really love the look of this. I mean, the spilling effects just gives me a very like cottage, natural, fairy garden kind of a, a a decor and what's really great about these when you give them more sun they're gonna have these bright yellow flowers that gonna be they're just really gorgeous they kind of cover up most of the mulch area and I really love the delicate look of it and uh, the taste it's actually it's pretty neutral it kind of reminds me of the succulent crunchier part of like a romaine lettuce so I love just kind of taking these and, and throwing them in my salads or or uh, sandwiches they really create a nice texture and all it is is you know you just kind of break this out you don't have to pick you know one by one piece by piece of these um, leaves to eat you just pick these and kind of break break them up into maybe one inch two inches long and throw them in your salads it creates a really nice crunchy succulent texture and to grow these, they're super easy as cuttings. You just really just throw them like flat down on the ground and the nodes would touch the soil and set some roots. So I really enjoy these. And some articles I've came across in the past said that gold moss is actually good for the liver. <laughs> Ooh, the fruits are getting bigger. This is my rose apple tree. Oh my gosh. 
I was so obsessed, I counted the other day and there were 22 fruits. So I'm really keeping my fingers crossed. What I'm actually wanna share with you guys is not the rose apple here. It is the living mulch that I wanna to talk to you guys about. So these are the gold moss and it grows super fast once you know the weather warms up. Now let's not forget about our herbs. Herbs? Herbs. But if you're from UK watching, I guess that one was for you. So herbs, they can be, you know, grown in full sun or part sun. Herbs are really great because you usually, you know, keep them trimmed anyway as you're harvesting to use. And a lot of them can take a little more shade than you think. I got here some oreganos at different types. Um, there's even some Cuban oregano. Uh, this one is a nice, a really beautiful variegated variety. And then this one, I believe the name is a uh, crate of detony really love the look of this it's got these really nice pretty soft colored flowers kind of like pink and lavender colors and then got a really fuzzy leaves i'm really trying to fill out more of the space with this herb here so mulching does not have to be ground cover it could be the shorter plants that fill in between your larger plants such as this one here i'm using the menthol leaves also known as vix plant this one I use it you know a few of these in my juicing but I also love these mostly use it as like a topical uh, herb for like mosquito bites or itchiness from uh, flea bites or even you know some very minor cuts on the skin just sort of minor uh, skin irritation because it has anti you know septic antibacterial properties in there so I really love using these and you can see that these leaves you know they're super succulent really really fuzzy and the best thing about it is that it is really juicy when you rub it on your hands so it really seems to help uh, really well with like reducing the itchiness for me and my family all right let's now take you guys to some living mulch that really loves the sun these ones are a type of purslane. Now there's the wild purslane that kind of just grows in between cracks. They have small little flowers. These ones here have really beautiful flowers, which um, kind of opens during the warmer, t warmer time of the day. But I really love these in a sunny position because it really helps to create these blooms. Otherwise you can definitely grow them in part shade, which I got a tiny little one I can show you, but they're not going to produce these beautiful flowers. Now that we're in the evening, these ones are closed up, but they definitely like being in full sun because these ones grow really well in the heat and uh, the more heat the more sun you give them the more flowers would produce and I love putting them on my plates now these I believe are like a hybrid version of um, the wild purslane and of course don't forget about your wild purslane they are loaded with omega-3 when my mom was young my grandma used to tell her to go pick purse lane in the streets like they're out of the cracks between the, like the pavers and all and they would make a sweet tea with it it really is good for cooling the body especially for those hot days i guess for most days in vietnam Ooh, they're coming the flowers are coming <laughs> i'm seeing the little purples kind of like peeking through these buds this is an all healing plant all healing herb uh, they go by various names, but this one I originally got this plant for uh, because of a Chinese medicine. They use this for a lot of the summer tea drinks. So they actually use the flowers of these to make the tea to dry for tea. But I learned that the leaves are also edible. So it's just, you know, these ones don't grow very tall. So it just kind of creates as a really a nice as like a, a ground cover or like a low a border kind of a, a plant for my uh, jambu jambu rose apple so got some nice beautiful deep purple shisos keeping them low and trying to get the plant more full so that they can create a more dense canopy to shade the 
ground or soil that is. So that's it to this episode. I hope you guys had enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification button. And if you want to see more of my work, be sure to head over to Facebook and Instagram, as well as my website where I got some plants and seeds available for you guys. I'll leave the links of everything that I've mentioned in this video in the box below. Thank you guys. Happy gardening, and I'll see you right back here in the next one. Bye.